Chicago and the noise, none other than now an official Two Voices poet, Carnes, my brother from another mother. Give it up for Carnes Turner Jr. Yeah. Say that if it wasn't for men like this and Christopher from P4CM, two voices wouldn't be here today. It took men to put aside their egos and say, I'm gonna help you with your vision. Because I know if, when I started my vision, I needed the help. And when others turned away in ego and the title, this brother right here didn't, he opened his doors, he gave his insight, he gave his advice. And I just want to publicly say I thank God for you. Think about every woman's heart that I've ever broke off to. Think about how I use flattery to soften their defenses just enough to bring their guard down. You know, just enough to get in touch with how they felt inside. Just enough to bring their draws down. Just enough to get in touch with how they felt inside. I would tell them all the right things in all the wrong ways. Call them to tell them that they're beautiful and to have a nice day because I knew no other man was doing that so I would gain their trust. Convince them I wasn't on no bogus stuff and fill their head with hot air from my chocolate charm until they went cuckoo for my cocoa puffs. <laughs> because once you have them in the bowl, all you have to do is milk it and spoon feed their trust in your lips. Kiss. And kiss their insecurities goodbye. Wrapped her securities around my waist until I was insecurely in her thighs as the insecurities in her eyes would cry out, don't hurt me. I trust you. As I looked her dead back in her eyes with my eyes and said, don't worry, I lust you. With a manhood harder than the heart that I had towards their feelings, I was no less of a prick than the pricks that were sticking to purposely. The only difference between the way they did them and the way I did them was that I convinced them that I was doing them earnestly. Because the truth is, honestly, I truly did care for them. I just went about the wrong way in expressing how a godly man should love them. I would sit and take the time to listen to them complain about their husbands. How my husband doesn't understand my passion for poetry. How my husband isn't there for me the way that you supported me. How the fact that you listened to me shows me that you noticed me when I felt no one else cared. And I would give them the attention outside of their marriage that inside of their marriage they liked elsewhere. And in my insincerity, I chose to fill the void of the loneliness they felt in. But even sincere motives in the wrong direction could break a woman's heart. Because with her trust, soon after comes her heart in her hand. Sister, never, ever, ever give your heart to a man. Because your heart's your most valuable possession. And through a lot of women giving me their hearts and me breaking them, I learned a very valuable lesson that a man will never be able to protect your heart in the way that God does. Because a man will never be able to affect your heart in the way of God's love. Because God's love is perfect. And because sin tries to reside in your heart when it comes to your heart, it's only 
But because God resides in your heart, when he comes to your heart, it's only natural that he deserves it. But because sin also tries to reside in your heart, sin tries to take the godly concept of love and tries to pervert it. And that's why when most women give men their hearts, men have a natural tendency to hurt it. You want to know the difference between worldly love and godly love? You will never hear a godly woman tell you that God broke their heart. But you will always hear stories of women telling you that a man did. And brothers, don't make the same mistake that this man did. Misleading them to believe in promises you broke before they even came out of your mouth. Knowing that you had no intention of carrying those promises out to sell the wolf tickets to get them howling at the moon because women give more than just their bodies when they cocoon your caterpillar. They expect to produce butterflies that soar through fields of endless dandelions, not clipped wings from you dandelion, just lying like it's dandy, just a lie inside of panties, man. Yeah. <laughs> Have you ever thought about the fact that the same game you're running on them, somebody probably ran on your mother, which is why your father is not around. Yeah. Or somebody ran on your bigger little sister just to get her drawers down, and God forbid, somebody used the same lies that you're telling these women or these men to impregnate your kid. Why do we never think about how our actions affect others until our actions affect us? Justify what we want and convince ourselves that we're in the right all along until, until God has to correct us. And it took me almost losing my life over another man's wife to realize the sin in my insincerity. To have a woman move out of her house, separate her assets, file for divorce for her husband so that she could marry me when I had no intention of doing the same. And it took a lot of women falling for this godly front to realize we just aren't misrepresenting ourselves, but men that are players were also misrepresenting Jesus' name. And it took a godly woman calling me out on my fakeness for me to change, and I'm really glad she did. Because if I've ever had a testimony that Jesus Christ lives, the fact that I don't lie or manipulate women anymore for my own personal gain is. But I had to learn the hard way that heavy hearts aren't to be taken light. So the next time a man or a woman offers you their heart, don't take the hearts and ruin them like I did, but redirect the hearts to Jesus Christ. Um, how many of y'all have ever been heartbroken before? I ain't just talking about like a relationship, I'm talking about like death, uh, institution, anything like that. Um, the truth is, like, we have, um, we've all broken somebody's hearts before. Um, and so a lot of times, like, we may hold resentment towards our fathers for not being there in our life or somebody that may have cheated on you. But a lot of times, like, we forget about the fact that a lot of times we cheat on God every day. And a lot of times, you know, a lot of, we want to blame other people for the reason we hurt, but we don't want to take responsibility for the ways that we hurt Christ and everything like that. And so I just really want to encourage you guys um, with this next poem. If you have any animosity towards people or institutions or anything that has broken your heart, um, I really encourage you to, to forgive them because you really can't move forward without forgiving. You'll have that heaviness on your heart. It'll continue to be on your heart. You'll wonder what's holding you back. You won't be able to tell us because you haven't forgiven somebody, man. Brought that to the altar or laid it down. We'll talk. So. Um, with that said, um, this last poem I'm going to do is called I Hate Your Wife. I was just smoking. 
Because regardless of the way that you made me feel, I could never be blunt with you. I was always too blown when you blew me, letting my true feelings ride shotgun to how I was feeling in the moments when we were together. Because regardless of how I was feeling, before I saw you, you always had a way of making me feel much better. And it was for that reason that I began to fall in love with you in the first place. Your arms were like condoms and birth control pills. When I would feel like going nuts, killing depression, and providing protection before they can impregnate suicidal thoughts. I guess it makes perfect sense why you were always pro-life. Until you waited until I was alive to kill me with your politics. Convincing me that we can birth the future. Only to be so ashamed of me to make me your back alley abortion. I guess looks can be deceiving. I guess your charm was deceptive and your beauty was fleeting. Because when I first laid eyes on you, I felt cross-eyed, hung up on your looks until I took the time to read past the cover of your book and look at your flaws only for you to respond by saying that I wasn't seeing straight because I was cross-eyed but that I was cross-eyed because I wasn't seeing straight as it related to your cause but it wasn't until then that I paused, took a step back and realized that in fact my vision was straight but that you was the one that was cross-eyed not because you were seeing straight but because you were seeing somebody else on the side <laughs> I didn't know a sanctified marriage could have peripheral vision. But evidently it does because not even your husband was getting your undivided attention. I guess infidelity just runs in the blood because your sister is a gold digger, your brother is a hustler, your cousin is a pimp, and I'm starting to wonder whether or not your father is alive. But when you told me that you were not like your other family members, I talked myself into believing that even Gomer was a prostitute. And then if Hosea could find the good in her, then I should be able to find the good in you. So I gave you the benefit of the doubt, put my pride aside, altered my thinking, and asked you out, dated you. But how did you expect me to honor our relationship if you weren't even honoring your marriage in the first place? And as much as that hurt me, I can't help but think about your husband and the hell that you're going to go through when you face him. And all the hell that you were going to go through as a result of how your infidelity disgraced him. When he starts to wonder who and what you were doing at the time where you called and said you had to work late. Or how he entrusted you to be a steward of his finances only for the money not to be going where you said it was going in the first place. Or how he's listened to you talk so much about his family behind his back instead of to his face too. I wonder if he'll treat you like you treated me. I wonder if he'll excommunicate you. Out of any relationship I've ever had in my life, it was by you that I was the most hurt. And Jesus, what's worse, is the woman that I'm talking about, is your spouse, the church. So Jesus, I'm praying that you forgive them for all the hearts that they've broken. And that people will not give the death penalty to their faith in God because of her. But realize that a church's misconduct is nothing more than a mistrial of your grace. And help all the people that find the church guilty to find Jesus Christ innocent. So people can look at your son and no longer look at your son like I do and say, Jesus, I love you, but I hate your wife. Okay, everybody can just rise to their feet. We want to close in prayer.